In this video, I'm going to look more closely at the nerve roots of the upper limb, drawing out the area of the skin and the muscle that they supply, aka the dermatomes and myotomes of the upper limb. As always, if you want to draw along, you can download all of the illustrations from the links below. A dermatome is the area of skin supplied by fibres from a single nerve root. As a general rule, the dermatome for the upper limb travel down the lateral aspect and then head back up the medial aspect. To understand why, we need to look at how the limb develops. Now normally I try and avoid the E word as much as possible, but this is a time where some embryology knowledge can be really helpful. Originally our body started off with a tube, with dermatomes at every vertebral level. After a month of looking like a henchworm, limb buds start developing, and these go on to form the upper and lower limbs. The upper limb bud originates at the level of C7. As the limb bud grows, it pushes this dermatome out and away from the body, and if it continues growing, other dermatomes get pulled along too, leaving us with higher nerve roots heading out from the shoulder, and lower nerve roots returning to the axilla. To add these to our illustration, I'm going to start with that distal C7 dermatome. This mainly supplies the middle three digits, and parts of the hand and forearm. Moving laterally, we have C6 supplying the thumb and the lateral forearm. C5 lies over the lateral aspect of the arm and parts of the shoulder, with C4 running from the shoulder into the neck. On the medial aspect, fibre from C8 supply skin over the little finger and the rest of the forearm. The T1 dermatome is found on the medial arm, and then T2 continue back onto the trunk. If a nerve root gets damaged, we'd expect to see loft or altered sensation across the entirety of its dermatome. However, although these dermatomes are relatively well defined, their borders can be a little fuzzy. So if you're trying to assess sensation in these regions, make sure to test in the centre of these dermatomes. This way you can be confident that you're only testing sensation from a single nerve root. The myotomes are all the muscles or parts thereof innovated by a single nerve root. These muscles often have a similar location, however clinically it's often more helpful to think of them in terms of the movements they control. So in this illustration, we got the major movement for the upper limb. Each of these are primarily controlled by one, or sometimes two, nerve roots. For example, abduction of the shoulder is primarily supplied by motor fibres from C5. Flexion of the elbow is controlled by C5 and C6, whereas extension of the elbow is part of the C7 myotome. Movement of the wrist are also controlled by C6 and 7, only this time C6 controls extension, whilst C7 is responsible for flexion. As we move distally, the lower nerve roots start taking over, so C7 extends the digit but flexion of the fingers is mainly controlled by C8. In the hand, C8 and T1 share joint custody over movements of the thumb, but ab and adduction of the fingers is pretty much only supplied by T1. Damage to a nerve root can impact all of the movements it controls. For example, if C6 was injured, you'd expect to see significant weakness in wrist extension. However, some movements such as elbow flexion are controlled by two nerve roots. In these cases, damage to one of the nerve roots can make the movement weaker, but it shouldn't be lost completely. So, those are the major dermatomes and myotomes of the upper limb. Remember, if a nerve root is damaged, then both its dermatome and myotome should be affected. If the pattern of dermatome and myotome loft doesn't match up, then it probably isn't a nerve root injury. Other than that, if you're having any spinal nerve struggles or dermatomal dilemmas, then please feel free to get in touch. But otherwise, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll hopefully see you again soon.